Welcome to our section on formatting HTML forms. This uh, example just shows you a few of the ways we can kind of clean up and organize your form to make it more presentable. And um, it assumes you know the basic form tags of form and input and we'll add to that some new tags that help with the formatting. So let's let's get started by letting me show you this form. We are looking at a form for a parent to sign their kid up for camp. And let me just fill it out real quick and submit it and to show you how it works and then we can talk about how the how it was achieved. So if I put in some information here, and so I'm just typing this in, tabbing between fields, scrolling down the page and we're going to say that daughter Mary is interested in swimming and HTML programming and now we'll submit the page and it will submit it to a receiving page here and the receiving page will just kind of repeat back to us the information it received so we can see it below is a summary of the information received thank you Bob Smith we have your email address or we have your mail address, we have your email address listed as following information about your camper. And then the following is your schedule based on interest. So swimming class scheduled for 9 a.m. HTML class is scheduled for 3 p.m. Okay, so that's basically what we did. Now let's look at the HTML codes used to create that. First of all, I'll just look at what are the div codes that we use to make the overall page. So here we can see uh, I've used my standard HTML tags and the whole page is in a class frame. And then we've written the little information about where the page came from in a P tag. We've used a div class equals header for the blue around the title and then we've used div class equals form to create the gray around the form. If you look at the CSS file that corresponds to this you can see the frame is a fixed width 900 pixel and that gives us a fixed width page and so everything is within that and then the header with the blue and the padding is within that the padding keeps the W off the side. And the form, the color here is E6, E6, E6. That's a, uh, a shade of gray, as you can see. It also has padding, so that means the, the fields we're putting in the form don't touch up against the side and have some space. Okay, so, but the point of that really is your form tags here where we begin the form tag are free to go inside any other div tags you use for formatting the page. So the page can be a multi uh, column page or anything like that and you can have forms inside it. The next thing we did to, to organize the information is we have these boxes, parent information, for example, camper information, activity interests. Those, if you have a little bit longer form, it's good to use those because they group the information uh, with related information. And those are done with a field set and the legend tags. So here I say I'm beginning a field set. And beginning a field set essentially means I'm just putting the box around a set of input tags. And you see the input tag you should be familiar with here input tag of type text where I'm getting the person's first name okay after directly after the field set tag I put a legend the legend parent information is what is shown 
here on the page above the box. So within that field set tag, I have several input tags. And you see I have an end field set that ends the parent information and a new begin field set with a legend for camper information. So every set of input tags is enclosed in a set of field set tags to show here how they are grouped, parent information, camper information, and activity interests. The next thing I want to show you is you can see that for each field of input, I ha I've put a prompt of what information needs to be there. So I've written the word first name next to the place where the person was able to type Bob. And I did that with a label tag. So we'll go to the beginning of the form here again. The form begins here. We go into our first field set. And here I've made a label that matches the text input tag. So at first I start with a label tag. And then I have uh, an input tag. What I've done is you can see that it says for first name. So it's the label that goes with the input tag getting the variable first name. So my input tag is a type text and it gets variable first name. And there's a label for that input also called first name. And in that I put the text first name colon between the begin and end label tags are the, is the text that will show up on the screen. Notice also I've done, I've set here label class equals prompt input class equals text box. The class of a label or an input tag simply tells it where to get the formatting back in the CSS. So if we go back to the CSS, I've said that the label.prompt class should have padding, a height. And what I did is I set float to left. Float to left means the label stays to the left side of the page, but another div can go to the right of it. And that's because I want my input div here or my input uh, tag to go to the right of the label tag. And so that is here with padding height and width. So they, it's the float left on the label class that makes the input go up to, next to just to the right. And that's what makes Bob go to the right of first. Now I want Bob to the right of first, but then I want to go to the next line when I do my next label. So the way I did that is I took my label and input tags and I enclosed them in a new class called input pair. I just made up that word input pair. And so I have a class of division called input pair. And the reason I did that is so each input pair would flow sequentially down the page. Depending on the size of your objects, you may or may not need this, but I included a clear both in my input pair just to show that the input pairs would not be put beside each other, but would flow down the page. And I have a small padding uh, in the input pair as well. I found the one pixel padding on the input pair just kept my the different pairs from touching each other, gave me a little bit more space there. So you can see we define the style of the label, the style of the input, and then both of those two are enclosed in a division input pair. And then a whole bunch of input pairs simply flow down the page. I just reuse class input pair to put another label and input. Now let's go, let's take a look at what happens when we submit this, right? So if you remember for how forms work, the form, my form here is going to call page campsunnyreceive.html. So that's the page 
that will be called when somebody clicks the submit button. Okay, and so this the get method is the way of sending information from one page to another. So let me scroll down, click submit, and here's the results. So the data that was entered on the first page is read on the second page. Let's look at the HTML behind that. And if we start here, let's start this at the beginning of the body section. So we have the body section. And the very first thing I do is I set a variable here, page params equal to get params. Now the actual working of the get params function is kind of beyond the scope of what we're gonna work on here today. But basically, the get params function finds all of the variables that were sent to it from the other page and assigns it to this page params variable. This page params can be named anything you want, just a made up name for that variable. I'll show you briefly if we go to the head section of this file, you can see function get params is listed here and it goes through these steps to parse through the text string that is sent by the by the other web page to figure out what the variables are but in this exercise we're just going to use the variables we we won't really go into how that function works and you can see very quickly i get that page params thing that's just a setup you can't really see anything yet now we get into the output of the page div, div class equals frame we have um, just the regular information about where this page came from, a div class header, put the thank you for your registration information, um, H2 tag, below is a summary of their information. Now here you can see where the page says, thank you, Bob Smith. So Bob Smith is the first piece of information we're getting from the previous page. That is written here. We use a P tag followed by the word thank you, but then script document write so that we can use our JavaScript. And here's the, the key thing, page params dot first name. So the key thing to learn here is that page params variable that we set up, if you add a dot, and the name of the variable that it was given in the page that called this, so we called that variable first name back in the form, then it will output the value of that variable. So page params dot first name is what is outputting here in the document write the word Bob Smith. Be careful with the document writes on what where the HTML is. So HTML started here with the P tag, it wrote thank you, and then we went into script mode, so we were doing JavaScript, so we wrote out page params first name, which was Bob, but then you see the script ended, so we're back in HTML mode, and then we put the closing P tag, okay? So you'll see later that P tag could be inside or outside the document, right? Depending on how you want to set it up, so this is an example of with it outside. Next, we said we have your mail address as 23 Oak Street. Let's just scroll down a little bit. And here we began scripting and we did the document right. And look at the P tags are in quotes here because they're strings that are going to be output by the document right now. So these P tags are in quotes because they're just text in the document right. And then page params dot street address one again the word street addr1 comes from the name given to that variable in the form on the other page um, and so you would have to you would only know that from the other page and so we print out city state zip and eventually all of the variables in there one new thing we did here in the beginning, well, maybe you want to print out something different depending on what 
the person in the form um, typed in. So if you remember those activities, there were four check boxes. They were named act, act swimming, act biking, act hiking, act HTML. Well, if somebody checked one of those, if somebody checked act swimming, the word swimming was assigned to that variable. If they didn't check it, then no word was assigned to that variable. It's just left blank. So here we say, let's have some conditional output depending on if they check that checkbox or not. We do that with the if statement. And that's a JavaScript statement. So we begin our scripting and we say if. With the if statement, the first thing in parentheses is the condition that we want to check to see if it's true or false. So here we're going to say is page params act swimming, that variable, is equal to the string swimming. The double equals here is, if you remember, the equal sign was used for assignment of a value to a variable. The double equals is the comparison. Do these two things equal each other? And again, act swimming comes from the name of the variable in the form. And the word swimming comes from the value in the form that was assigned to it when somebody checked it. So what we did here is we said, if this is true, then execute the JavaScript in these brackets. There's a begin bracket and end bracket. And that JavaScript is document write. Your swimming, swimming class is scheduled for 9 a.m. So you can see we have four if statements. And those if statements are, correspond to each of the four variables we had with the checkboxes in the form. Again, looking back to the results here, you can see the following is a schedule based on interest. It wrote your swimming class is scheduled at 9 a.m. and your HTML class is scheduled at 3 because we only check those two checkboxes. And therefore, only swimming and HTML become true. When it said did act biking equal biking, it said false. That's not true. So the statements in those squiggly brackets were not executed. So, okay, so this is, um, uh, the intent was that you already knew the form and input tags, and we kind of built on that with the field set and label tags and applied uh, any of the formatting you've done with div tags in the past.